Hey guys, welcome back to F1 2021 Part 9 of the My Team Career Mode for Cross GT Racing Coming off a, uh, a, a good performance in the Austrian Grand Prix um, We didn't quite get the position we wanted in that race But I mean we definitely showed some promise uh, Trying to chase down our rival at the moment, Fernando Alonso Not quite coming off, but definitely showing that our car has uh, some pretty good pace and we can be relatively competitive uh, this season as we head off to our facility and looks like the chassis department needs us to resolve an issue for them I hate to drop this on you but we could do with your expertise on this one so it would appear that the chassis department and our other driver Guan Yu Zhou have a difference of opinion on the direction of the uh, of the department and what they should be developing next uh, if we focus on department led development uh, we get a 50% discount on a part but driver focus goes down if we go driver led we get a 10% discount and driver focus goes up and I think at this point uh, focus on R&D is probably more important than driver focus so I think we'll go with department led at this point not an easy decision but you handled it well thanks Awesome, yeah, so at this point, having a 50% a discount on part is definitely going to help us out, I think, uh, research and development um, is probably our, our biggest, uh, probably the most important part at the moment. Not that our uh, second driver isn't important, but uh, we've got to think long term. As we head over to the activities timeline, we've got nine days before the next Grand Prix, so a lot of time to fill, so focusing on team acclaim again. Uh, and also generating some money from our sponsored uh, vehicle event. Um, we can fill up most of these, so we'll go also get some resource points and um, aerodynamics uh, morale focus as well. As we head over to our facilities, we're going to increase the build time for powertrain, and we're also going to uh, focus on uh, one of our reliability parts or dur durability parts that failed last time so get that one out of the way we've now applied our second um, component for every single uh, engine part so we really need to focus on possibly increasing uh, those okay. later on we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process we'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix Cool, so chassis upgrade just come through, roll dampers straight back to the R&D screen, uh, focus on another upgrade. Chassis, uh, the department that's lacking the most in terms of R&D, but um, we've done a few, I think we've done some major ones. We're doing another major one here, which should be on before the Belgium Grand Prix, so that's 45 days for that one. So the upgrades we're doing there taking a lot longer than some of the other departments. So that's why that one's lacking there. Our new parts have completed without issue. They'll be on the car, ready for the next race weekend. Awesome. So two aerodynamics upgrades coming through at the same time. Redesigned air brakes, uh, uh, brake ducts, and uh, a DRS activation upgrade, which is cool. So aerodynamics coming along really well. Almost at a point where we can't really do anything more. Oh, powertrain department now needs us to resolve something. Could you take a look at this for us, please? So powertrain department want more simulator time to test the new setup. If we agree, we get a discount on a part. If we decline, we get increased driver racecraft because this is going to take time away from driver development. But I think we'll agree and let the, and we'll get the discount on the part. Thanks. I know these kinds of decisions can be challenging, but I think you made the right call. So do I. I think we, we really need to focus on those parts as we just had a cylinder head part uh, come through. We can now put another upgrade in here, even though we have no resource points, our magnetic compound is 100% discounted, so we can get that for free. So we'll focus on that as well. Powertrain coming along nicely as well. So pretty productive uh, time in the facility for this for these last nine days. 
as we now prepare for race weekend in Britain for Silverstone. Practice, practice went well. Uh, all the upgrades, all the resource points. Um, just really, really hammering home everything that we needed there. As we get ready for qualifying now. Silverstone, uh, the home of F1. As we almost get a, we, we cut the corner at turn one already. Lando Norris sitting in pole at the moment. We're taking these corners pretty tight. We've cut the first two already. Well, there's more one and three at least. Coming right into the DRS zone, currently sitting 14th, 15th now as our car. It, it's it's competitive it, in, against the rest of the back marker teams uh, and some of the the middle teams, but we're definitely not. Uh, a threat to the front runners at this point is uh, Norris and his McLaren just just pulling away from us the power in that McLaren just eclipsing us completely but I mean we can still hold our own Bottas now now sitting pole we're sitting 16th as we head through sector 2 coasting through these corners and we've, we've gone wide we've gone wide there into the next DRS zone that now drops us down to 19th gap now two and a half seconds to Perez who is in sitting pole at the moment as we come around as we coast around this long right hander in sector three hard braking take the corner pretty tight but we don't have a very good run into that corner foot down final corner across the line and that looks like it's good enough for P18 2.9 seconds off off the leader Guan Yuzhou almost a second slower than us finishing last in qualifying so P18 and P22 for Cross GT Racing heading into the British Grand Prix I think we can still be competitive here at Silverstone uh, it's a it's it's a track that I uh, that I, I did well in practice. The the qualifying I made a couple of mistakes which didn't help. But you know, we should still be able to be somewhat competitive here. As we take a look at our rivalry breakdown with Alonso who is just, you know, who's slowly starting to pull away. There are a couple of points ahead. We'll just see how we go in the race, try and get some points back. But let's head on now to race day. Welcome along then to Great Britain and the Great Silverstone Circuit for today's Grand Prix. The 3.6 miles of the Silverstone Circuit in Great Britain is hallowed ground to the Formula One faithful. We have 18 corners that wrap around this former World War II airbase and some good passing opportunities at the end of the DRS zones. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box and it's fantastic to have you with us here today but I'm curious as a man with experience out on the track how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid but from the moment qualifying's over you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the run down into turn one it's all a bit like going into battle and the unknown situation makes you nervous those pre-race nerves are a good thing the day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Lando Norris, and Leclerc, Sainz, Ricardo. Gasly and Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Sonoda, Sebastian Vettel and Stroll, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher and the captain, Russell, Mazepin, Joe and Nicholas Latifi. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. 
the points finish last race. Let's aim to keep the momentum going. Cool, thanks, Jeff. So we'll take a look at our setup. We're going to go mediums to soft, six laps in the mediums, seven laps on the softs, 13 and a half laps worth of fuel. Should be enough to get us across the line. And we're going to follow the same same tactics we usually follow as we've got five red lights here at Silverstone and we're off and away for the British Grand Prix the British Grand Prix? The, the British Grand Prix, sorry as we come down to turn one again we cut that corner a little bit we're going to go around the outside here massive dive bomb into turn three and we've I think we managed to pull it off. We've still got Stroll on the inside. We're still side by side with Stroll. And we managed to get the job done. As we go back and we take a look at that. So here we go. And we pass one, two, three. We get past three. We come alongside Stroll. We managed to do three in two and three. We, we stay side by side with Stroll. We put the foot down and we just cut straight across and we just get around him just putting the pace on and now we just come straight back because he's in an Aston Martin and they have much more pace than us at this point in the season so that now puts us up P15 gained three positions halfway through lap one we're not even halfway we're not even a third of the way through as we have Giovinazzi coming up the inside we go wide we go wide there at turn 9. Giovinazzi just comes flying past. Raikkonen now trying to make a move. But we managed to hold him off. As we go wide there at 13. We managed to hold position. Let's do a quick check of the car. Everything looks fine. Raikkonen comes up the inside at 15. We come back around and it turns into the inside for us. And we take that position straight back. What a battle there with Raikkonen. The last few corners there. 16, 17, around 18. Lap 1 completed. And we're sitting 16th position. As we're back at turn 15 again. No change to the, to the lineup at the moment. Everyone's driving pretty steady. As we come right up behind Giovinazzi at 16. Oh, we're right there at 17, but we just can't quite get it done. We go wide at 18. DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. So DRS now activated. We're, we're still trying to get ahead of Giovinazzi here. We go wide there at turn three, and we go wide again at turn four. Which gives Giovinazzi a much better exit. We go wide at five as well. We get DRS, but we think we may see some rain. ETA is about 15 minutes. Okay, so rain is on the way. 15 minutes. We've got 11 laps of this race left to go. So 15 minutes, maybe we might get some rain in the last maybe one or two laps. But as we go wide, track limit warning there. Out of turn 15. 16 we take well we take 17 well as, as well but we just can't get on the accelerator hard enough window, you'll be on the soft gap to teammate behind is 4.7 seconds okay so when you show 4.7 seconds behind us which would probably put him in last position but that's okay he usually picks up extra positions in these races so I'm not too worried about that as we come around turn 5, we've taken those turns pretty well, we get DRS, the gap to Giovinazzi hasn't opened as much as it normally does. So we're keeping pace. We're on the mediums, everyone else is on soft, so if we're able to keep pace here, with a difference in tyre compound. When we change to the softs and everyone else changes to the mediums, that should in theory give us a, a massive advantage over some of these middle teams. So we'll just have to keep we just got to keep pushing and try and keep keep up with these with these races up here with these cars and then when we come out of the pits on the softs we should be in a, in a really good position as we go wide there coming out of 12 into 13 but we managed to to correct a little bit at 14 
we do run a bit slower through that sector 0 0.3 seconds slower than our personal best at the moment but that's all right we take turn 15 really well we're coming up behind Giovinazzi well gaining on him six we're right up behind him at 16 17 we we try to accelerate but we just can't get an angle on him so we have to hold back as we go faster through sector three for the race so far which is a great which is great for us it means our car has the potential to to really to really push it to these other teams as we now come around through sector two still behind Giovinazzi the gap to Raikkonen is now two and a half seconds so I'm not worried about the cars behind us we just want to try and get ahead of the cars in front of us sector two faster through sector two by three hundredths of a second so not much but still faster through sector two so we're improving there turn 15 we go a little bit wide we're right behind Giovinazzi he goes defensive we go around the outside at turn 16 we're side by side we push ahead we cut 17 a little bit and we get the job done on Giovinazzi box box we're coming in this lap wow what a move as we go back and we take a look there we go around the outside at 16 we just have a better angle we cut the corner a little bit there at 17 we get the job done I didn't know if he was going to give me enough room so I cut the corner a little bit to make sure that we didn't have any contact the last one we wanted some damage to this car although we are boxing this lap so it probably wouldn't have been too big of a deal but we want to make sure we can maintain as much of an advantage as we can get as we go through sector 2, sector 2 pretty well we're gaining on stroll DRS activated faster through sector 1 and sector 2 half a second up on our previous best so we're getting even faster as we come around turn 15 stroll goes a little bit wide we're going to go down the inside we were supposed to go in the pits but we got to make the move we had the chance corner cut warning there we get the job done we were gaining on Stroll. he went wide so instead of going to the pits we decide to go down the inside and take the place from him we do cut the corner and we get a warning there but we cut him off there at 17 we get the job done now p14 oh and we've gone way off the track there but that's all right we come into the pits now pitting a lap later than we were planning to but when you've got a chance to gain a position you gotta take it so we take the position which gives us a little bit of a little bit more breathing room as our teammate Guan Yu Zhou is now coming to the pits as well so cross GT racing now double stacking we've got plenty of room between us so this should work perfectly fine medians come off softs go on out of the pits and Guan Yu Zhou is still wheeling down the pit lane so the double stack working perfectly there plenty of time in between look after these tires now we want to finish the race on this compound all right lap eight seven laps down six to go on the softs all the way to the end of the race we've got a, an almost seven second gap to Russell and P20 it's nine seconds to Alonso in P18 our rival so we've got breathing room either side all we got to do is make sure we drive the car like we were on the mediums and we should be able to make up some time as we come around turn 15 now a bunch of the other cars now heading into the pits five laps of fuel remaining five laps we've got we're just coming up to having five laps left in the race now so slightly less fuel than we need but we should be able to coast through some of the sectors to to get get it home as we almost make contact with stroll coming out of pit lane but we managed to push past we're now back up into p15 most of the grid should be on mediums now we're on soft so we have the advantage in tire compound which should help us out quite a bit 
fast the through sector to this lap. We're gaining on Sonoda now by the looks of things. The gap to Stroll is now one and a half seconds. So we're pulling away from Stroll. One second faster that lap than our previous best. So a second faster on the softs. Everyone else in the mediums should in theory be going slower than their best times on the softs. So we should be able to gain some extra places here. Radar suggests some weather is going to hit in around five minutes time. So stay on your toes. Five minutes until until rain hits. The sky is now pretty grey. It was sunny when we started. It's now pretty grey and cloudy. Five minutes means we might get some rain at the end of the race. In the last lap. Not good in the rain. I've had very little experience in the rain. So we kind of want to avoid that. So we need to push to get this race done before, before the rain hits. As we go fast through sector one this lap. We're right behind Sonoda now, the gap 0.3 seconds, the gap to Stroll 2.6, so we're pulling away from Stroll at a rate of knots. And we're gaining on Sonoda and Ocon just in front of him. As we get DRS coming out of 14, we're gaining on Sonoda, we've gone faster through sector 2, we're now a tenth of a second up on our previous best, we go wide at 15. We almost turn it into the inside, a little bit of contact there. With Sonoda, he locks up heading into fifth, into 16, sorry. Around 17, we get a warning for the collision there. We can't get the job done. And we lose half a second on our current best time through that altercation with Sonoda. But we're still right behind him. As we do, we cut the corner a little bit there at turn three. We're right behind Sonoda at turn four. DRS activated after turn five. He's pulling away, but not, but not by much. The gap still 0.4. So we're managing to keep up with him here as we come right up behind him. Right up behind him at seven. We've got. We can make a move here. We're going to go for it. DRS activated. We're side by side down the straight, heading to turn nine. Oh, side by side at turn 9, but we get the inside and we push through. Nice That's move. P13. Cheers, Jeff. P13, and we're now closing it on Ocon. We went faster through Sector 1. Again, Sector 1, we're getting faster and faster. ERS activated. DRS activated on Ocon, and we just have so much speed. We breeze past him, heading up to turn 15, and then we are now P12. We can see Vettel ahead of us in the other Aston Martin. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. Okay, so a little bit of wear on the ICE. Not good, but we've only got two laps left as we go wide at turn three. We clean it up at turn four. Go around the inside of turn five. DRS, no, not DRS. ERS activated, sorry. To try and catch up to Vettel, who's two seconds ahead of us. I don't know if we'll be able to catch him, but we'll make a go of it. Tire wear starting to become an issue. We've been pushing this car pretty hard, and these tires seem to be wearing down quite a bit. But that's okay, as we go sick faster through sector one and sector two this lap oh and we've made a mistake there it's 16 which messes us up for 17 around 18 this is your final lap final lap of the race final lap now we lost 0.6 of a second the car behind is dropping back by about three tenths a lap okay that's awesome so we're, we're getting ahead of Ocon he's still only half a second behind us Two seconds the gap to Vessel. We probably won't pass him. So now we need to focus on just making sure Ocon doesn't pass us. And we can maintain P12. So we lost uh, six tenths of a second last lap because of that mistake. And Ocon just comes flying up behind us. He would have had DRS activated. Uh, looks like a little bit of contact there. But we managed to get back ahead of him at two and seven. I wasn't even paying attention there. And he just came flying up behind us. 
we've managed to get back in front. 0.2 seconds, he's right behind us. Two tenths of a second the gap. We're now slightly pulled away to three tenths. As we coast through sector two. He's still right there, 2.2 seconds behind us as Sergio Perez gets the fastest lap of the race at the end as he takes the chequered flag. It's another Red Bull victory as Ocon comes up the inside and gets around us heading into turn 15. We go a little bit wide there, we accelerate, we're going to have to make a move. We dive bomb, we go around the inside at 16. We keep him out at 17, we get the job done. Even Sonoda gets past them. And there we have it. We managed to steal the position back. That's P12 here at Silverstone. And we get driver of the day to boot. Here we are then, a fantastic British Grand Prix. And what a performance it was from our race winners today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. So there we have it, P12 from P18. What a race, six positions from where we started. Guan Yu Zhou finishing in last. He dropped a position. He's usually really good at gaining positions, but not today. But still a good outing for our team as we managed to, to still beat some of those faster cars, some of those cars higher up the performance comparison, which is a good, good look for us, putting us on the map. As we take a look at the driver standings, Max Verstappen still leading, Lando Norris in second, and then the two Mercedes, Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton in third and fourth as Bottas, it looks like he's now jumped ahead of Lewis Hamilton, his teammate, he's now three points ahead of him. The gap between Verstappen and the rest of the group still not overly big as we take a look now at the, as the, at the constructor standings. And Mercedes with their double podium today are closing the gap to Red Bull. The gap now only three points. But McLaren and Ferrari falling behind now. Ferrari now in triple digits behind Red Bull. 109 points behind. So not looking good for them at this point. McLaren still in with a chance. But it's going to be tough. As Mercedes and Red Bull are just dominating these races. Well... That is the end of race weekend here at the British Grand Prix here at Silverstone. A great race there from us. Driver of the day. Gaining six positions that race from where we started. So the car showing a lot of promise this season. We just got to keep on pushing with those um, R&D upgrades. And we could put ourselves into a really good position heading into season two. If you enjoyed this, uh, please leave a like, comment, and let me know what you thought of the race, what you think of the series so far, and just any other thoughts you've got, where you think we should go, where we should be heading. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, it would really help me out quite a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.